Peoples of the world, welcome! Capital G bringing you a little bit of an experiment today. We're going into the realm of Popper Commander. Glass Dust Hulk will be the one leading the way for us today. Before I get into the list, of course, be sure to uh, look for me on Discord and on TikTok so we can jam some games, uh, share some crazy TikTok adventures, what have you. And also, if you want to see links for the deck list uh, and for the Popper format, um, those are going to be in the description below. So let's start with the Popper format itself. What's different? Uh, so the difference with Popper and regular Commander, uh, with Popper Commander, any uncommon creature, legendary or not, can be your Commander. So that already gives us a huge selection of creatures to be our Commander right off the hop. Um, if you are using an uncommon legend from Baldur's Gate that lets you choose a background, the background also must be uncommon. Uh, same is true for Commander Legends partners. Um, if one partner is uncommon, like both partners would have to be uncommon for you to use them as commanders. So that's an easy start. What about the 99? Every card in the 99 must have been at one point or another printed at common to be legal in the 99. So um, we'll see examples of cards that are upshifted to uncommon or maybe downshifted from uncommon to common. Uh, a good example of this is Monastery Swift Spear, which was originally printed at uncommon in Cons of Tarkir, but in Double Masters was printed at common. Therefore, it's legal in this format in the 99. What I am not certain of, I'll have to get someone to add to answer the question. Maybe in the comments, this would be a good place to discuss that. If a creature has been printed at both common and uncommon, um, can they legally be your commander? For example, the Grey Merchant of Asphodel, originally printed at common in OG Theros. In Theros Beyond Death, reprinted as an uncommon. Is it legal as a commander? I'm leaning towards yes, but I don't actually have that answer. So if someone can comment below, please let me know. Because if yes, well, Gary's going to win some games. Anyways, Glass Dusk Hulk. Let us talk about this particular build. Um, I just went through cards I had in my collection and picked the Glass Dusk Hulk because it is so easy to smash in for some Voltron-esque damage. Uh, five mana for a three, four. Not a great rate, but whenever another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, this gets plus one, plus one, and cannot be blocked this turn. Don't worry about the cycling. We are not putting this in our hand. Uh, this is all about smashing face. So I just kind of went through all the commons and uncommons in my collection, picked the Glass Dusk Hulk, and for my commons... Uh, just picked a whole bunch of artifacts and ways to make him buff. Some of them are equipment, which is a great way to go. If you have enough common level equipment to throw onto him, do it that way. Um, I personally wanted to have a bit more card momentum, so I have a few cards like the Alchemist Vial that on ETB draws me a card. I also have a few mana rocks that I can cash in for cards along the way if I need to. So no, we don't see the locket so much in regular commander, but in popper commander, it makes a little more sense to me to run them. Yes, even the signets were common. Fun, fun stuff. Bone splitter is a common, great common for the deck. A little bit of dungeon dungeon venturing. So I've got some cards that bring in the initiative and some cards that, you know, let me venture to the dungeon, especially with something like Delver's Torch, where every time I attack, I get to venture. Because uh, I'll be attacking freely and safely every time. Uh, the artifacts at common gives us all sorts of utility, like being able to pull lands off the top of our deck and onto the battlefield. Admittedly, this is more of a slot. I'd rather something that draws me cards rather than just um, maybe a third of the time puts a land off the top into the battlefield. But by that same token, it's just a nice slot filler for the time for the, to get me started anyways. And that's what this list is. This is just to get me started in the format. I've not had a chance to play this. So I don't know how good it is in the popper format. Um, 
I feel pretty good about it when I goldfish it. Um, it's pretty easy to get glass dust hulk big enough to one shot people or sometimes two attacks will do the trick. Especially since it naturally cannot be blocked. Uh, we'll be playing artifacts at a rate that'll make him humongous. I'll never be able to block him. I want to highlight something here before I continue. As I said, any card that has at some point been printed at common is legal. So even though the version of Icor Wellspring that is on screen right now is showing as an uncommon out of the Brothers War decks, it has been previously printed at common. If ever you're not sure, you can always use Gatherer to verify if the card is legal in a popper format. Uh, so yes, that's um, it's important to add the highlight since unfortunately my program does not let me pick and choose which versions of the card to display. That said, again, it's so easy to look it all up and double check and make absolutely sure. So you have more examples of cards I can just play them, and get another card into my hand. And kind of keep the keep the storm count going. Now the deck doesn't storm off per se, but every time I cast an artifact, it makes my glass dusk bigger. So yes, please. Such is the plan. Now this is a fun little uh, tool that I wanted I wanted to try out for a while to get the initiative. But if your equipped creature becomes blocked, it deals two damage to each creature blocking it. So if you throw this onto a creature with death touch and swing. If our opponent, if our opponents are forced to block, well, guess what? They're gonna die to death touch damage before we even go to combat. So, I thought that is a fun little include. This deck doesn't run any death touch per se, but you know, just being able to bring the initiative into the game, especially with Azorius, I thought it was very, very powerful. And the fact that our commander can't be blocked, so even if someone takes the initiative from us, we swing right back at him, take it right back. So that is my logic towards bringing the initiative into the game. Ah, clever conjurer. Acts as a mana dork essentially in this uh, in this build. Blue mana dorks, we love them. We don't get them very often. Now, Gearsmith Guardian just a, just a simple five five. It's going to be a five five because we're going to have blue creatures on the battlefield. So a lot of it, of course, is filler. Again, this is not refined by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, as I get to know the format better, then I can provide definitely more focused and more consistent builds. That's true of anyone who, you know, dips their finger into a new format for the first time. And especially a format as complex as Commander or even regular Popper. Um, you look at some of the decks that you find in regular Popper and it's like, wow. Because cards like Dark Ritual are illegal. Cards like Brainstorm are illegal. So there's a lot of insane commons played in regular 60 card popper. So you can imagine, you can see all sorts of cards that you, you would never see in a regular commander game will show up here. So yeah, no, I, like I said, that that it, it was a nice way to kind of refresh. Um, I remember, like at this time last year, I was building tons and tons and tons of decks. Um, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty was a gold mine. Uh, so was uh, Battle for Baldur's Gate. Uh, New Capenna, I know lots of people loved it. I I didn't really build a lot from that set because I didn't quite love it as much. But still, lots of good stuff came out of there. And as the rest of the year went by, I kind of slowed down on my deck building because I have so many uh, commander decks now that I don't get to play them all. And that comes to that's a, an inevitability for anyone who loves to brew. Classic disenchant here. Ignore that 30th edition. Got to play some defense, so if someone wants to kind of swing wide at us, downsizes is essentially a blue fog. We have our three mana open, somebody swings out at us, well, minus four, minus all, all our creatures. All of a sudden, we only take 
instead of taking like 30 damage, we'll take two, depending on what's coming at us. Hindering light, someone wants to remove our commander? Okay, give it a try. But not only are we gonna counter that, but we'll get to draw that card. Very powerful effect. Invoke the divine, of course, another way to pop artifacts or enchantments. Jace is screwed in the alley because it creates a clue token. Uh, the tokens do trigger our commander. So this can be used on offense or defense. I can use it. I can use it just to get that clue token and get our commander to be unblockable. Or I can use it on defense for that minus four. Either way, that clue is going to get cashed in for a new card very, very quickly afterwards. Lauren's Escape. We're, we're seeing a lot more of these one mana protect a creature spells, both in white and in green. So, Lauren's Escape, the latest example of this. We've also seen cards like Blacksmith Skill. We've seen, um, what was it, Temio's, it's FM uh, Kamigawa, but it was a green one. So, like I said, we're seeing this effect a lot. I think it's a really cool effect. We've got a pretty critical mass of this effect now, I think, so. Secrets of the Key. For one blue, create a clue. If you flash it black, uh, flash it back, I should say, you get two clues. Um, our commander loves this. Spell Pierce, believe it or not, is common. So is regular counter spell. Um, the only reason I haven't put regular counter spell in the deck is because I'm not quite sure how often I'll be able to hold up double blue. Uh, if it turns out it's easy, then I'll swap it out. Until then, I think Spell Pierce um, slots in quite naturally. Could also be negate. Negate would also be fantastic as a counter spell. Just a couple of sorceries to round things off. Recommission. Uh, white is actually really, really good at recursion. So being able to bring most of our artifact or creature cards and our 99 anyways back from the graveyard to the battlefield is pretty sweet. Also, Rush of Knowledge. We specifically want to have our commander out when we cast this so we can draw the five cards. And Thoughtcast is gonna, essentially going to be one blue draw two uh, at most stages of the game. Uh, land count, our land count is 35. Again, if you see any cards here that are marked as uncommon, such as the Azorius Chancery, well, it was originally printed at common all the way back in Dissension. So, yeah, uh, these are common. You can play the Bounce Lands in this format. Uh, Darksteel Citadel, same thing. All the way back in Darksteel, it was printed at common. Evolving Wilds, of course, we know is common. Eleven Islands. Lonely Sandbar, again, this was originally printed at common. It's since been upshifted to uncommon, but it's still legal to play in this format in the 99. Obscure Starfront, why not? Gain a life and go get a Plains or Island? Sure thing. Opal Palace is common. I thought that was cool. Especially if our commander gets removed once or twice, and then we get the extra plus one plus one counters on it when we recast it. I thought it was a fun include here. Twelve planes, Razor Tide Ridge. The bridges are co are common. Secluded Step, Terramorphic Expanse, the Fair Basilica. I did not put the blue one, the blue version of this in, but the blue version would also be a great addition. Just a land that we can eventually cash in for a card if we need to. Tranquil Cove, all of these lands, the game lands, are common. So, yep, love that addition. Uh, but that is our land base so far, just those 35. I didn't have an extra Seed of the Synod handy, so that's why we don't see Seed of the Synod. And the blue, the mono blue uh, sphere land, didn't have a copy of that on hand either, so that is why it's not on the list. But that's the fun thing about this, is that you can just kind of flip through your bulk pile and see what you can put together. And that's essentially what I did. It took a few hours, but um, once I picked something, uh, went through the bulk pile for cards that synergized, and boom, a deck. So again, will this hold up actually in PDH? Someone who's played the format many times, please tell me if it does or not. And if it doesn't, um, how can I pump it up, shall we say, and keep up the pace? Because I know that regular popper, 60 card, four copies per four copies of each card per deck popper is lightning fast. 
so I don't know how fast this format is or how slow this format is. Uh, but with only 30 life to start, it's definitely a lot more aggressive than what we're used to seeing in regular Commander, or at least in theory it should be. So again, if you've played this format or are interested in playing in this format, let me know. Put it in the comments below. Uh, look for me on Discord so we can play some games. And uh, we will uh, see you next time. Bye for now.